Hey everybody. Um, so in this video, we are going to continue working on our um, fire simulation. And uh, where we left off last time was we had our um, object moving around the screen. It was able to bounce off the walls. And then after so many frames, it would uh, become recovered from the virus. So what we're going to do today is uh, basically add in the other people. So we're going to spawn in other people. We're going to make sure that they don't spawn on top of each other using our collision method that we wrote in the last uh, lesson. Um, we're going to update them all, draw them all, make them all appear on the screen, and then we're going to play with the social distancing factor um, to make some of them be moving and some not be moving. All right. uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I'm going to start in the main class today, um, and we're going to work on spawning the other people to begin with and just get that working. So. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable that just keeps track of how many people um, I want to have. So I'll set this to 200 to start. And you can adjust this um, if you want less or more, um, depending on you know what what you're kind of what you want to test out. Okay. And then um, for uh, you know underneath patient zero, we're going to now spawn uh, the rest of our, our people, um, and we'll we'll store these people into a list. So I'm going to start with a list with just patient zero. And then as we um, spawn in people, we'll append them to that list. Okay. Uh, and so here, if you want to try and write a quick for loop uh, to just spawn in the rest of the number of people, um, go ahead and you know pause the video, write that code, um, and see what you come up with. Okay. Um, and so if you if you did just that, um, you know I'm going to use for i in range and then number of people. Um, this is a good thing to remember, number of people minus one in this case, because we already have patient zero. So if we want 200 people, um, then 199 plus the one we already did. So I'm going to, I'm going to do minus one there. Um, and then just to spawn them in, uh, we'll, we'll come up with this variable for social distancing. Um, and we'll just set this to false for right now, but we'll actually, um, set up a percentage later on to um, have this kind of uh, pick whether it should be true or false based on some percentage of people that we want to be um, social distancing so we can test different numbers. Um, uh, so what we want to do is just to spawn in a person, we just can just say person equals, uh, and then we can call our person class. And it's basically going to be the same thing that we uh, did over here. So I'm going to just take that and I'm going to move that into my uh, my window there. All right. So um, let's see. So we got that in there. And the only other thing we really want to do is change from sick to healthy because we want all of the people, the rest of the people to spawn as healthy. And the other thing I'm going to change in here is this is going to be our social distancing factor. Okay. Um, and so now all we have to do is append this person to our list. And voila, we have spawned in all the people. Okay, now if you run it, nothing happens except one person spawns in. So we haven't really changed anything yet in terms of this um, because we haven't drawn the other people in. And so right now, if you want to take some time to um, draw in the people and update them, um, in the main, go ahead and pause the video and add those lines of code and see if you can figure out where you might add them in in the while loop. All right. And um, yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually put them in here. So we're going to have patient zero update. Um, and at this point, I actually don't really need to have patient zero as its own thing since all the people are going to update with the same algorithm. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Um, algorithm and, or get rid of this call to that function and replace it with um, for each person in people uh, person update and then we'll call in the parameter screen and the list of people so that we can check collisions and things like that. All right, so I'll update all the people and then we still need to draw them all so in, when we update our graphics Instead of patient zero draw on the screen, let's go ahead and do the same thing for person and people. Oop. 
uh, person dot draw and then screen. All right, and then we update our display and let's see what that looks like now. So we'll go ahead and run it. And now we've got a whole bunch of people moving around and they're all kind of interacting. All right. And a couple things you can see, like you can sometimes see like a couple people are on top of each other when you initially spawn it in. Things look a little bit weird just from this initial spawn point. You can see a couple of pairs are like partnered together, like these guys, these guys, these guys. So we might not want that. And, and this, so what we want to do is when we spawn them in, we want to check to see if there's a collision. And if there is one, we want to spawn it at a different location. Um, but, you know, so far, so good. Looks pretty, pretty good here. And so um, in order to update, you know, and make them spawn in at a certain location, we're gonna um, do that right in here. So we're gonna modify this uh, lines, these three lines here in order to do that. And we're gonna use a while loop for this. Um, and so if you, again, if you wanna try this um, and see if you can do it yourself, see if you can get them so that you're using your the collide method we wrote so that the um, objects aren't spawning on top of each other. Um, give that a try. All right. Otherwise, um, you can follow along with me here. So, what what we have to do is add some sort of a flag in to see if the people are colliding. So we're gonna assume that there is a collision, and then we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically pick a random location to spawn, check against all the other people to see if there is a collision, and if there is one, then we'll um, we'll repeat this loop basically. So the logic here that I'm gonna use is while colliding, we'll indent these two lines of code here. So while colliding, um, person equals, uh, so we'll spawn in the person at a random location. Before we append it to the list, we actually um, don't wanna append it to the list until after we're sure that it's not colliding with anything else. So basically, um, once it's not colliding, then it'll append it. So I guess we only indent the one line of code in. Um, so we spawn it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set colliding to false. And we're going to use a for loop to go through each of the uh, patients so far, or each of the people so far. So for, um, and I'll use a second variable called person2 in uh, people. If person uh, check colliding with other, and then person two. So basically, I'm going to go through this list of of people that we've already spawned in, and I'm going to check: is it colliding with person two? Is it colliding with the next one? And so on and so forth, so forth until we get through the entire list. And if it is, then we'll set this colliding variable equal to true because there's a collision, and we'll break from this for loop. Uh, we don't need to continue checking collisions after we find one. If we find one, then let's just respawn the person. So we'll restart this function, um, and then uh, we'll break there. Right. And then after all of that finishes and this while loop uh, is exiting, then we will finally append that person. And then we'll do that for this many times. Now, you have to be careful about this. Um, you, you, If you increase the radius values, um, it can be possible that you know you can't spawn all the whatever 200 people into a window or if you you know if i try to if i try and run this right now it should work just fine because 200 people can randomly distribute in here and they're not starting off on top of each other um looks a little bit better but if i jump this up to say like an order of magnitude higher to like 2000 people um it might take a little bit of time to actually spawn them all in or in fact it might be impossible to you know, randomize that all in. So if you're if you're noticing this is happening, you either you know need to decrease the radius of the people so they don't take up as much room, um, or uh, decrease the number of people. So this is what's happening right now. It's just spinning because it's trying to spawn in the people, but there's just too many. They're they're just going to be colliding. So um, you know, you know, if we if we take that out, you know, we can we can now spawn them all in. Maybe. Yeah. 
but you could see 2000 to update it, it it's really taxing the system here so um there's there's just a few too many here so just be careful about that um so 200 is a pretty comfortable number i mean we can try smaller population sizes to see you know how how this looks if the people are a little bit further away. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of a bug there. We've had a couple bounces and the virus is not spreading all the time. So um, we'll have to debug this a little bit. All right, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it up to 200. Um, yeah, so let's actually figure out why um, Sometimes the collisions aren't aren't happening here. So it's colliding with some, but sometimes sick and healthy people are colliding, but they're not passing the virus. So let's try and figure out, look at why that might be happening. All right, so we'll take a look at the person class to debug this. And actually can see here, um, I have a little typo here. <laughs> Uh, healthly is not a status, so that's why sometimes um, the simulation was breaking. Um, so I just cracked my typo, and now it looks much better. You can see all all of the collisions are causing the virus to spread. So you might have not even had that bug um, if you typed it right. right. But there we go. We can see um, that's working now. Okay. Uh, and so let's see, let's go back to, we've got the people. Let's go back to spawning them in with now with the, the social distancing. Um, and so that's just kind of like the last part to make this, you know, work pretty well. Um, we have a lot of different parameters we can adjust. We can adjust the number of people. We can adjust the recovery time. Um, so the last thing we want to test is how does social distancing actually affect the spread of the virus? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to have a variable here that it's like percent of people social distancing. And so it's a, it'll be a factor, not not a percent, but it'll be like a factor. Um, so let's change it. Factor of people um, social distancing. So let's say that we wanted to say that three quarters of the population are going to practice social distancing, 0.75. Um, now, what we can do is instead of just setting this to false right away, um, what we can do is after we set it to false, we can now say, okay, if um, if I is less than you know 75% or whatever, set it to true, um, so that the first 75% of people we spawn in are social distancing, and then the next ones are the last 25% or not, and so it would it would look simply like if I is less than um, the factor of people social distancing times the number of people. So that this will basically give us a um, percentage percent of population will practice social distancing. Uh, then we set this variable equal to true. Right. And now I can simply adjust this um, this factor here. All right, and, and I can test this out now in my simulation. And now you can see only, you know, patient zero is moving around um, and he is infecting some people. But you can see how effective that is that, you know, a lot less people are um, becoming infected as quickly. And so we can see the effects of it in our, in our very simple simulation, which is pretty cool. Um, and it looks like in this in this version of the simulation, everyone has recovered, so the virus is actually eradicated at this point. Um, and there is a number of people that actually didn't even acquire the virus at all. Um, and so we can look at like, okay, how does this change with you know we only have fifty percent of people um, practicing. So here we can see, all right, well it's spreading a little bit faster. Um, see if anyone is safe got one person right here one person up here and looks like both those two were able to avoid it so um yeah 
hopefully, uh, you know, you guys enjoy this little exercise. Um, what you could continue to do with this uh, simulation um, to maybe gather some data from it, which could be interesting, would be to, um, as it's running, maybe have it print out statistics of um, how many people are currently sick, how many people are currently healthy, and how many people are currently recovered. And then you could maybe plot those values as a function of time. Um, and then you could basically make graphs for various um, social distancing numbers and population. And you can see you know, how social distancing affects, affects it, how, how long did it take for the virus to eradicate, uh, how many total people were infected, how many people actually got it out of the total. So you could do a lot of interesting things with this um, at this point in time. Um, so yeah, that'll wrap it up for now. Um, I, I do hope you enjoyed this uh, this video series, and um, you know if you have any questions, um, you can certainly ask me, and I'll try to answer them best I can. So, All right. I'll talk to you guys later.